How you doing, brothers and sisters? Uh, we're the brothers from the Gathering of Christ Church, and we thank you for all your positive responses. And we're glad that the word of the Lord is going out, and it's enlightening so many people. We thank the Most High, Ahaya, Asha Ahaya. He says, I am that I am. That's his holy name. In the name of Yeshaya, which is Jesus Christ. Wabrawak, which is the Holy Spirit. We thank the Most High that we received the Holy Spirit to give the truth in the last days. Today we're going over the true understanding beyond any shadow of a doubt of the lost tribes of Israel. Who are they? You're going to find out, you're going to find out that the Holy Bible is not just a religious book. It's a history book. And we're going to show you who the lost tribes are. Uh, you've had some uh, scholars claim uh, who the 12 tribes are. In the Mormon book, they try to go into who the 12 tribes are, or the lost 10 tribes, rat, uh, mind you. And you have some Israelite groups. Now, the majority of Israelite groups I know teach the 12 tribes based on a teaching that came from a brother named Ariya on who the 12 tribes are according to the Bible. You're going to find that that brother which is strong in his spirit and we thank him for what he's trying to do, you're going to find out that he was wrong. We're going to go into the 12 tribes according to the Bible and show you beyond any shadow of a doubt who the 12 tribes are. Now, one reason we have to do this is because in this place we call America, uh, which has been taken over by the Western world, have placed images up like this saying that this is the angel Raphael and this is Mary and this is Christ. See, I know a lot of you know that, okay, we know that Christ wasn't European. We know the angels are not European and they're just pictures. That's what they say. But a picture speaks a thousand words. If you take these pictures and put it in the book, when your children go to read the Bible, they're going to think that the angels, Christ, Mary, Peter, Joseph, uh, Moses, all the people of the Bible, they will think that they are European. And that was a tactic that the Roman Catholic Church used as a form of white supremacy over the earth. What we call spiritual white supremacy. But we're going to go into the Bible and show you who are the lost tribes of Israel. And we're not going to blame anyone because we know that God put the 12 tribes of Israel in the state that they are in today. And now the same God is giving their identity back to his people. Let's read Hosea 4 and 1. Hosea 4 and 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. So the Lord is telling Israel, hear his word. Hear his word, not a doctrine. Children of Israel, hear the word of God, which is the Bible. Go ahead. For the Lord have a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. The Lord have a problem with the inhabitants of this land. The people that are living here. He have a problem with, with this land. Why? Because there is no truth. There is no what? There is no truth. There is no truth here. We can't find the lost sheep because of all the lies that have been placed before the lost sheep. The lies that are set up in our institutions to keep the lost sheep lost. Read. Nor mercy. There is no mercy. Read. Nor knowledge of God in the land. And there is no real knowledge of the true God in Christ in this land. We're getting a watered down version of the gospel in this land. We're getting a European spin on the Bible in this land. And through that, the lost sheep have not been found. But they will be found today. Open up your Bible today. Open up your book. Open up your mind, your heart, your spirit. And you're going to find that everything we bring in here from the Most High is 100% fact and true and cannot be disputed. Let's get Colossians 1 and 26. Colossians 1 and 26. Even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations but now it's made manifest to his saints. The mysteries that have been hid for ages and for generations 
are now being made manifest to his saints. All right? So all the mysteries, all the seals that have been put in the book, the Lord is now revealing it to his true saints, those that, that follow the commandments and teach the true gospel and understanding of Jesus Christ. Those are the saints of the Most High. And the people that he gave his laws, statutes, and commandments to. Let's go to Matthew 10, 5, and 6, starting with Jesus Christ, or, or whom we ignorantly call Jesus Christ in this land. His name is Yeshua, which means deliverer or savior. Read Matthew 10, 5, and 6. We're going, we're going into now breaking down the 12 tribes of Israel, the lost sheep. Read Matthew 10, 5, and 6. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. These twelve, Jesus sent forth. Who are they? The twelve disciples. He gave them an order, a commandment. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Now we know that later on, the disciples, along with Paul, went to Gentiles. But we're going to give the understanding on that also. But before that commandment was decreed, Christ made this commandment. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Read that again. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Don't go to the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? Non-Israelites. People that are not from the chosen seed of the children of Israel. Read. And into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. Go ahead. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He said, I would rather you go unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he said don't go into the land of Samaria because the children of Israel were taken out of the land of Samaria and Gentiles inhabited the land. We want to prove that. So Christ told them to go to the lost sheep. What makes a people lost? No identity. No natural customs or culture of their own. No land to call their own. No identity. Total captivity and slavery. You're lost from who you are. So Christ gave the disciples a commandment to say, listen, I need you to go to the lost of my people. The people who don't know that they are actually from the seed of Israel. I need you to go to them because they're lost. Alright? Read Matthew 15 and 24 out of the Bible. See, and we follow Christ. So if Christ said go to the lost sheep, we're going to go to the law of sheep. Every, everyone now is trumpeting Gentile, Gentile, Gentile. That's fine. But how can we ignore that Christ said go to the law of sheep? You just can't go into a Gentile teaching and don't go into who the Israelites are. Paul, Even Paul says the Jew first and then the Gentile. You just can't have your teachings based on the Gentiles. That's wrong. That's wrong because the first thing Christ commanded his disciples were to go to those lost sheep. And we're going to find those lost sheep today. Read Matthew 15 and 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Christ understood who he was sent to. The people that fell from the old covenant. So if they fell from the old covenant, they needed what? A new covenant or a new testament to get back to the Father. Alright? Now, Let's go into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. How can we identify them in the last days? All right? Just to give you a, a brief synopsis of what happened. Solomon, which was king over all of Israel, that's David's father, he sinned with many uh, strange women. He started dealing with the nations that the Creator, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, told him not to deal with. Through that sin, he built groves and, and built cities to Moloch, which is another God, Satan. Egyptians took him off, Edomite women took him off, and he ended up sacrificing to the gods that the Most High God told him not to sacrifice to. Through his sin, the kingdom was split in two. Split in two. Northern kingdom, southern kingdom. 
the southern kingdom, you had Judah. We're going to go into who Judah is and the tribes that were under Judah. The northern kingdom, which is part of Samaria, you had the Indian tribes or the lighter tribes. And we're going to go into who they are today and how they got to the land. Now, through this sin, Israel became scattered throughout the earth. That was the beginning of the diaspora. And when they scattered throughout the earth, they had children. And through time, their children lost their identity. All right? Let's go to Deuteronomy. The 32nd chapter. And the 21st verse. Deuteronomy 32 and 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. Why did they become lost? Why did they fall? Because Israel moved God to jealousy. The same God that saved them from the tyranny and hands of the Pharaoh. So Israel started moving God to jealousy with those things which are not God. Started following, if you put it in, in context today, started following other religions. Read. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And we provoke, or the Israelites provoke God to anger with his van with their vanities. Started put started putting up other gods to be him. Forgetting the God that saved them and destroyed the land of Canaan and gave them a promised land. Read on. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. And because Israel put up a no God for the Creator, he put over them a no people as his people or another people or a foolish nation to get power over the earth instead of his people. Read that again. That the last part. I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. So now the lost sheep is jealous because the people that are physically and spiritually not the children of God is ruling everything you see today. And the lost sheep are in a subservient state and they're jealous. They, they work hard and try to get to the top but never could get there because the Lord put them in a certain, certain condition. Now it's time to biblically, through the Bible, identify those lost sheep that are being oppressed by the nations that the Lord put over them. Let's go to Genesis. We're going back to the beginning now. Let's go to Genesis. The 49th chapter. The 49th chapter. We're going back to the beginning now. I want you to hold Genesis 49. Hold that because we're going to hold this place. Make sure you hold that for us, okay? We're going to start off by showing you how the Indian tribes got over here to the Americas. Then we're going to identify them one at a time along with the tribes of Judah. Let's go to 2 Kings, the 17th chapter, and the 17th verse. 2 Kings 17 and 17. Let's start now. Go ahead. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and used divination and enchantments, and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. So now, this is how Israel provoked their God to anger. Started sacrificing their children and turning their children over to new gods, the same way today. We may worship something, and what we do, bring it home and give it to our children. Be it Christianity, Islam, uh, uh, witchcraft, astrology, Hinduism, whatever. Whatever the parents learn, they bring to their children. Read. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and, and removed them out of his sight. His sight is on his holy land, Israel. Read. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. And when it says there was only one left but the tribe of Judah, he was talking about kingship. Don't forget the kingdom was split in two. Jeroboam and Rehoboam. 
Jeroboam was the king over Judah. Jeroboam was the king over the Indian tribes. So the only kingship would be left after that split would be Judah, the same tribe Christ came out of. Read on. Also Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the statutes of Israel which they meet. Go ahead. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel, and afflicted them, and delivered them into the hand of spoilers. Delivered them into the hand of spoilers. So you want to know how Israel got so low? He allowed the nations to spoil them and to take their riches, take their power, take their land. Go ahead. And delivered them into the hands of spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. Go ahead. For he rent Israel from the house of David, and they made Jeroboam the son of Nebet king. And Jeroboam drove Israel from following the Lord and made them sin a great sin. Go ahead. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did. They departed not from them. Until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said by all his servants the prophets, so was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. They was carried out of their own land unto Assyria as of this day. And you're going to find out that they stayed in that Assyrian captivity for about three years. And they took counsel to come over here to the Americas. We're talking about the lost sheep now. How do we know that? And this same Apocrypha, the King James Version, which was taken out of the Holy Bible, the Catholic Church took this out of the Bible. This was actually a part of the original Bible. This is 14 books that the churches are being denied. It shows you exactly how the northern kingdom got here to the Americas. Go to 2nd Edris, the 13th chapter, and the 39th verse. And then we're going into Genesis, breaking down in the latter days how to identify the lost tribes. How did they get here to the Americas? And this is about 718 B.C. Okay, the 721 B.C. is when the Assyrians came over and took, took over the northern kingdom, the Assyrians. They stayed in that captivity for about three years to about 718 B.C. And they took counsel to come over here to this new world. That's why they call it the new world. Yes, the Indians did not come through the Barren Straits a hundred million years ago or whatever things they're teaching in college the fallacies and false teachings that you may learn in these colleges. The Bible tells you exactly how the Indian tribes got here. Now we know that some Asians did come to the Barren Straits, but they were trading with the Indians that were already here. Read 2 Edges 13 and 39. And whereas thou sawest that he gathered unto, excuse me, and whereas thou sawest that he gathered another peaceable multitude unto him, Go ahead. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Oshia the king. These are the ten tribes that were carried away captive out of their own land during the time of Hosea the king. Go ahead. Whom Solomon Ansar, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. The new world. Go ahead. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. They went into a country where no mankind dwelt before that time. So that's a bold-faced lie that people were here in the Americas or in the earth millions and millions of years ago. Okay, that's straight philosophy that's coming from the Gentiles or heathens to distort the truth of the lost tribes. They went through all these different steps be it schools and religious institutions to hide who the lost sheep are, the lost sheep is today, to hide who the true people are. Read on. That they might there keep their statues, which they never kept in their own land. And they came to keep their statues, which they didn't keep in their own land. In Second Kings the seventeenth chapter. Read on. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. Now it's showing you how they got to the Americas. They went through the Euphrates, around Africa, over the ocean. Go ahead. 
For the Most High then showed signs for them, and held still the flood till they were passed over. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. It took a year and a half. The Lord stilled the waters. He made sure their ships wouldn't wreck. And it took the Indian tribes, or the, the tribes that the Europeans called Indian, to get over to this new land we're standing in here today. We're sitting in here today. The same land we're sitting on today in America, he gave it to those Indian tribes. It took them one year and, and a half to get here to the Americas. And you're going to find out, if you go into Christopher Columbus D'Ali's, his own memoirs, you're going to find out that in those memoirs, it shows beyond any shadow of a doubt that Christopher Columbus used the Apocrypha in Second Edris to state his case to the Queen that he knew that the lost tribes would come over to this land. So all that stuff they thought the earth was flat and all that was, was a bunch of garbage. They were selling people in the New World. They knew that the earth was round because the Bible tells you the earth is round. But they couldn't find this land because the Lord would shipwreck them before they could get over here. The Lord held the, the water still for his people so that they can get over here safely. Took them one year and a half to get here. Read on. And the same region is called Asarith. It is called Asarith. What is Asarith? Asarith means hidden land. The Most High hid it from the heathen. It's the new world that was promised to God's people, Israel, who became the lost sheep. We're going to show you how they became parts of the lost sheep. How did they lose their identity? How did they lose their customs? Whom they, which they promised to keep when they got over here. We're going to show you. You see the movie Apocalypto and all the evil that they started doing. What they were learning. How they were sacrificing their own people. So they started going back into the same evil. Then something happened. Where they lost their identity all together. But yes, the Indian tribes over here are highly spiritual people. Highly spiritual. They just lost their way. So we're about to go into the book of Genesis and break down beyond any shadow of a doubt who are the lost sheep of Israel. Stay tuned. Okay, now we're going to go into Genesis and identify the lost tribes or sheep of Israel. Who are they? We're going into the beginning. Let's go to Genesis 49 and 1. Genesis 49 and 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. He says, Come on, gather together at my bed. Jacob is the father of the Israelites. His name was turned to Israel when he wrestled with an angel. So, in old times, or in biblical times, before the father dies, he hand down the blessing and the future of what will befall the children. So he called his children together before he passed and says, Come, my sons, I will show you what will befall you in the last days. Now we're in the last days. So he was not talking about those children per se, but the seed of his children. What would be the condition of your children in the last days? This is how we can identify who the lost sheep are according to bloodline. Read. Verse 2. Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Israel your father. Who are the children of Israel? Read. Reuben, thou art my firstborn. Reuben was the firstborn. Now usually the firstborn inherits or, or, or he's the heir or the heir of the father. He inherits all the blessings. But what happened to Reuben? Read. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. The, excellen the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Read. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then defilest thou it. He went up to my couch. He slept with his 
his uh his father's maid, Bilhah. And because of that, he lost the, the promise of the firstborn. But he still had excellency and dignity. When you go into this book, I have a book here that you cannot get because it's out of print now. By Ronald Sanders called Lost Tribes and the Promised Lands. It lets you know when the Spaniards and some of the Jewish yes, Jewish, came over to the Americas when the Indians were here, that Reuben in Florida identified himself as a tribe of Reuben. Now this was before Reuben lost their identity. And Reuben also identified another tribe, the tribe of Ephraim. I'm going to read a passage out of here, the lost tribes in the promised land. And this guy, Ronald Sanders, he actually went into the study trying to debunk the fact that the Indians here in the Americas, he was trying to, to, to uh, debunk the fact that they are Israel. He tried to prove that they, were, they, they weren't Israelites. And through his research, uh, going into their camp, uh, uh, grave grounds, going into the history, he found out the contrary. All right? And he took historical documents to put together this book. There's a passage when Montezinos came over here to the Americas and I'm going to read it. It says, those Indians, he told himself, they are Hebrews. Pondering this thought incredulously and yet with growing conviction, he resolved that if he ever was released, he would seek out the Indian Francisco and tried to learn the truth. So Montezinos was arrested and he found out that, listen, these guys may be the Israelites. So when I get loose, I'm going to figure this story out. So he came over here and says, it says, Montezinos' story unclear as to the circumstances of his incarceration is equally unclear as to those of his release. But, re but released, he was and he immediately went to Francisco. Now, Francisco was an Indian, revealing himself as a Jew. Montezinos proclaimed his conviction that Francisco's hidden people were of the same race as he. Would Francisco lead him to them? The two men were soon back in the rugged mountains in which Francisco had made his initial revelation. Marching relentlessly, for a week before they finally came to a halt. It was a Saturday. That's the Sabbath. Montezinos makes a point of telling us, and they had come to a river larger than the Diero, and their echoes of the, the, the Sabbatian and all of this. Here, Francisco announced, is where your brothers will be seen. Waving a banner high in the air, the Indian guide soon was greeted by a puff of smoke, the smoke signals that the Indians use here. Far beyond the other banks of the river, a response of his signal. The two men waited. Eventually, a canoe appeared, bearing three men and a woman, all of them Indians, to the place where Francisco and Montezinos were standing at the water's edge. So they communicated a signal to say, come on down. They, the Indians got in the canoe and made themselves known. The woman got off and spoke to Francisco in the Indian tongue that Montezinos could not understand, although he could perceive that he was being identified in the conversation. She then turned to her mate companions to explain the situation. Upon hearing her words, they rose and went over to Montezinos and to his utter astonishment said, Shema Yasha Allah, Alahayanawa Akad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. They had recited in Hebrew the fundamental credo of Judaism. So when they came over here, the Indians were still speaking the Hebrew language. And we're going to show it, and you're going to pan it in. I'm going to show you. 
a brief conversation then ensued in their common ancestral tongue. According to Montezinos, whose fluency in it is almost perplexing to the reader of his narrative as it is that of the three mysterious new companions, they told him that they were themselves of the tribe of Reuben, the same tribe we're reading of in Genesis the 49th chapter, finding the lost tribes. So we know that the tribe of Reuben is the Seminole Indians. Also, there's a residue in, in Australia because it says they would not excel. You have the Aborigines or the indigenous people of Australia who are living in very subservient uh, uh, lifestyles at this point. So they also are part of Reuben in Australia. And that the tribe of Joseph lived on an island nearby. So not only did Reuben know who he was, he was identifying that Ephraim, the son of Joseph, was on an island nearby. Now we have identified the first tribe, Reuben, the firstborn. Seminole Indians and the, uh, the Indian tribes or the Aborigines of Australia. Let's go back to Genesis 49 and read the third and fourth verse again. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Unstable as water. And it says the excellency of my power. They are the only Indian tribes that didn't make a peace treaty with the Europeans that came over here because they had too much dignity to sign a peace treaty. And mind you, every peace treaty the Indians signed anyway was broken. So they had enough dignity to say, listen, I'm not signing no peace treaty. They're unstable as water. Read on. Thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed. So, Reuben would never come to his fullness as the firstborn, because of the sin of laying with his father's maid, his father's maid, Bilhah. And that's why they can't excel. And when you look at the Australian, the aborigines of Australia, who look just like the Seminole Indians, mind you, they have not excelled on their, whole, on their own land. They was taken down also. All right. Now let's let's break down the next tribe. Genesis 49 and 5. Simeon and Levi are brethren. Simeon and Levi are brethren. That lets you know that they would live on the same body of land. Read. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. Instruments of cruelty is in their habitation. What are the instruments of cruelty? The instrument is witchcraft, chango, Santa Maria, voodoo. Who is this identifying? The Dominicans and the tribe of Levi. Levi is the same tribe that Moses and Aaron came out of. The two brothers that led the children of Israel out of captivity. Okay, they're on the same island today. The island of Haiti, and on the other side of Haiti, you have the Dominican Republic on the same island. Two people on the same island as brothers, but can't come together. One living way lower than the, lower than the other one. The Levites are living way, way lower as far as their lifestyle when compared to the, the Dominicans. And we'll tell you why. They were the priests. Levi were, was responsible for handing the laws to the children of Israel and they fell as priests and because of that they're also in a very low state compared to the other tribes let's get some spiritual uh, proof on that let's go to the book of Malachi the second chapter verse 1 through 9 Simeon is the Dominicans Haitians today are the tribe of Levi. Now you notice today they still deal with the sacrifices. They were responsible for the cleansing of sins. So if you had a sin, you would bring a turtle dove, a sheep, a bullock, whatever the law contained to cover the sin. And the Levites would kill the sacrifice and make a, 
and, and make a sacrifice and a fire to the Most High to cleanse your sins. If you notice, out of all the tribes, Levi is still doing that today, but they're doing it on the left-hand side. You go to them for spiritual understanding or go to them to get what you would call a root off of you. They take an animal, they kill it, and sacrifice it to their God. Holding the same position they held under the old covenant, but they're doing it in evil. That's why it says here in Genesis, right here, that instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. And, and guess what? This voodoo that they're doing is real. If you believe in it and you're, and you're under that vibration and you're not protected by the blood of Christ, they can really harm you with those, those types of uh, instruments of cruelty. But let, let's go into why Levi is lower than all the other tribes. To whom much is given, much is required. They was given the law, statutes, and commandments and the priesthood to lead God's people. And they went off. Let's prove that. Let's go to Malachi. And we at Malachi, the second chapter, verses 1 through 9. Read. And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. The priests are the Levites. Levi, who are the modern day Haitians today. Go ahead. If ye will not hear, and if ye will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you. And I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already because you do not lay it to heart. So he cursed Levi. We'll go ahead. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces. And shall spread dung upon your faces. They even showed, I, I, I had an article a few weeks ago that showed the uh, Levites. And the Lord blessed their soul and made the Lord have mercy on them. In order to, to, to survive, they're eating Dirt mud cakes mixed with oil. They're selling dirt and mixing it with oil as nutrients so that they can survive. Eating dirt cookies. The Lord said he shall spread dung on their face. Go ahead. Even the dung of your solemn feast, and one shall take you away with it. And ye shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you. And you shall know that I have sent, sent this commandment over you. Read. That my covenant might be with Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. My covenant was with him of life and peace, and I get and I gave them to him for the fear with for the fear wherewith he feared me. He and, gave Levi everything, the priesthood, the commandments, read. And was afraid before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity and did not turn many away from iniquity, and yeah. did turn many away from iniquity, excuse me. So he, so Levi was used to turn people around to follow the Most High. Read. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Go ahead. But ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law, you have corrupted the covenant of Levi, said the Lord of hosts. So now they did the reverse. They caused me to stumble at the Lord. Read the next verse. Therefore have I also made you contemptible and base before all the people. So out of all the tribes, Levi, who was the head tribe at one point as far as the priesthood goes, became base of all the tribes. So now you understand, according to the prophecies, why Levi is experiencing uh, so much havoc and so much turmoil in the land of Haiti today. And they can come back. See, that's, see that's, that's the greatness of the Most High and that's the mercy of the Most High sending His Son. Levi can get out of those things and come back to Him. Read on. According as ye have not kept my ways but have been partial in the law. And because they was partial in the law, the Lord took their priesthood away from them. And now, in order for them to exercise any power, they do it in witchcraft on the left-hand side now. And they on, they're on the same island as their brother Simeon. So now we have identified, if you are a Dominican, yes, you're from the tribe of Simeon. If you are a Haitian, 
you are from the tribe of Levi. Now we are identifying these tribes, not to say that you're going to make it because you are these tribes, because you still have to follow Christ. But first, we're going to identify each tribe so you'll know that you belong to a nation. And that's important. No one can tell you that it doesn't matter who you are when all the other nations hold dear to their heritage. So it's important first to give you back what you lost. Simeon is the Dominicans. Levi is the Haitians. Now we're going back to Genesis 49 and, and showing how to identify the lost tribes in the last days. We're going to Genesis 49 and 8. Read that. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Judah is him whom thy brethren shall praise. So out of all the tribes, Christ would come out of the tribe of Judah, the tribe of kings. So how is the other tribes praising Judah? Christ came through the seed of Judah. How do we know that? Hold that and get Hebrews 7 and 14. Identifying the 12 tribes. Who is Judah today? Judah is a Negro here in America. You're not, you're not Negroes, you're not black, you're not African American. The Lord never called you that. You have a special spirit in you. The same spirit of kings. You notice when Judah does something, all the other tribes follow suit. Not, not, not that you're something special over everyone, because all the tribes are really equal in the spirit. 12,000 of each of these tribes are going to rule under the disciples in Christ. But Judah has that leader spirit. Okay? When Judah dresses a certain type of way, all the tribes and the whole earth dresses the same way. But when it comes to being the one that the people or the tribe shall praise, no one is going to praise you because you are a Negro or because you're from the tribe of Judah. That praising goes directly to our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, whom we ignorantly call in this society Jesus Christ. Read Hebrews 7 and 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Sprang out of what? Sprang out of Judah. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, sprang out of the tribe of Judah. Go ahead. Of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood because at that time Judah was not the priest. They were the kings. Levi was the priest. But as we read, Levi fell from the priesthood. So Judah is the brother that all the tribes shall praise. Through who? Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Go back to Genesis, the 49th chapter. And we read in Genesis 49 and 9. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art going up. From the prey, thou hast gone up. Judah is a lion's whelp, which means Judah is a lion's cub. So when you see uh, those songs uh, about Judah and you, and you see the lion, it represents the true spirit of the Negro. But he's like a little cub. When is he going to grow up and, and rouse up? and take his kingship in the earth. You notice when Judah rise up, all the other tribes rise up right with him. Look what happened in LA when the Rodney King thing went down in the 90s. 90s. Soon as Judah rose up, all the other tribes started rising up to the point where all the laws, a lot of laws were changed. A lot of laws were changed because they needed to pacify Judah. The civil rights movement, they had to pacify Judah because when Judah rise up, this whole place can get tore down. So they pacify Judah because they are afraid that Judah may rise up one day. Read that part again. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art going up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. So you're ready to leap. You're couching as a lion, but you're being pacified. Read. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? And that's what the Lord is asking. That's what Jacob was telling his son. Who's going to rouse you up? Who's going to uh, who's going to make you stand up and take your true position in the earth? See, these other nations are watching Judah because Judah is the barometer of all the tribes. 
We'll pacify them. We'll give them laws and keep them quiet. We'll give them Barack Obama. We'll keep them quiet. Just be pacified and allow us to rule. Judah have the spirit of a king. But who's going to rouse them up? You know who's going to rouse them up? Christ. Christ. Read on. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. Until Shiloh come. Shiloh is Christ. Shiloh means peaceable one. Okay, read that part again. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. Because we know that Christ is coming to bring the law. Yes, Christ is from the tribe of Judah. And when he come back, he's going to be exactly like his people are. We know that, that these nations have put up Caesar Bourget to be Jesus Christ. Christ do not look like the Europeans that were put up in the New World. Okay? Christ is from the tribe of Judah. Okay? Read on. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. And unto Christ, the Lord and Savior, the sacrifice. That's where the gathering of the people should be through Judah. Read on. Binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass coat unto the choice vine, he washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. He washed his clothes in what? He washed his clothes in the, in the blood of grapes. In the blood of grapes. What does that mean? When Christ, the leader of Judah, the king of Judah, come back, he's coming back to get his garment dirty. Soil, not with dirt but with the blood of the nations that have lied and have deceived his people. Yes. Yes. We're going into Judah right now. So Jacob is giving his son a prophecy that, listen, judgment is going to come from your tribe. Someone is going to come out of Judah that's going to straighten this whole earth out. And when he comes back, he's not coming back to give out flowers and, 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 to, and to invite you to a little party where you can skip through the tulips. No. Christ is coming back. He's going to soil you his garment with blood. With blood. Because of the evil that is being perpetrated here on his earth. And the lion this earth have done on him. How do you know that? Go to Revelations 19 and 11. It's showing you the precept. This is not our personal opinion. Revelations 19 and 11. And Isaiah the 63rd chapter. And I need you to also get out of the Apocrypha. Yes, the same book the Catholic Church took out of the Bible. 2nd Ezra 6 and 9. Still breaking down Judah. Don't forget, Judah is the Negro tribe. So the same blood that's in the so-called Negro was in Jesus Christ. The same blood that was shed for the sins of his people. You got that? Revelations 19 and 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. So this is going to be a righteous war, not like a war you have with George Bush. Through righteousness he judge and make war. He's coming back for war, man. Don't think that they're not planning on fighting him. All your governments of the world, you're going to lose. You're going to come together. You're out there with your manned space stations, your Eagle space stations, SOC-2 vertical traps, nuclear missiles. What you need missiles in space for? Getting the whole earth together to try to fight against the Lord and Savior. He's coming back angry. And righteousness, he's going to judge, and he's going to make war with this earth. Who is he going to make war with? See, the powers of this earth do not want to let this earth go. They know their time is running out, but they don't want to let it go. So they're going to fight for it. They're going to fight to keep this earth, even if it means fighting against our Lord and Savior. You would think that they, they must be out of their minds, right? They must be crazy. Then they'll tell you, listen, the Bible ain't real, the book is not real, what you doing up in space then? What are you putting weapons out in space for? You know it's real. You know the Lord is coming from the tribe of Judah. Judge and make war. Let's show you who he's going to make war with. Go to 2nd Ezra 6 and 9. 
Because we know what will befall Israel in the last days. But who's going to be ruling in the last days? Second Andrew 6 and 9. For Esau is the end of the world. So if you look at the end of the world, the people that are ruling this earth, ruling the economy, uh, uh, going into wars all over the earth, taking e the, each country down, that's Esau. The pure seed in European power is Esau according to the Bible. The pure seed. Read that part again. Esau is what? For Esau is the end of the world. Esau is the end of the world. So Esau would be the people ruling at the very end. Read. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. And Jacob's rulership is going to come right after Esau fall. So that's, the, that's this battle we're dealing with here. Esau know that this is it for him. When Christ come back, no more rulership for Esau. So he's going to fight. And Christ's blood, Christ's garment is going to be stained by the blood of those that fight against him. How do you know that? Go to Isaiah 63 and 1. So you'll know that this is not our opinion. Isaiah 63 and 1. Go ahead. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from, from Buzrah? Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments of Buzrah? Dyed means they was not originally one color, but once he got finished killing, it was dyed from white to red. Who is this that's coming from, from Bozra? Bozra was a capital city in Mount Seir, where the Edomites were before they came down. With Alexander the Greek and started conquering the whole earth. Okay? So it's Christ who's, who, who's going to go through Edom. Read. This that is glorious in his apparel. Who's glorious in his apparel? The king of Judah. Jesus Christ. Read. Traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness might, might mighty to save. That's Shiloh. That's our Lord. Mighty to save. Our Savior, Yeshua. Read. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? So the question is, Christ, if you came back with, with all white on, why are you red in your apparel? Read. And thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat. Christ, look like you just started, look like you've been crushing grapes, Christ. Where are you coming from? Read. I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. He went through Esau, and he see that all those societies that was established in the earth was not with him. All the powers that have been established trying to claim Christ are not with him. So what will he do? Go ahead. For I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury. He will do what? For I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury. Are you reading about this Jesus Christ in your church? Now you might get upset with me by bringing it out, but that's in the Bible. You say read the Bible, right? Christ is coming back for war. The powers that are ruling this earth will not willingly give this earth up. Satan have connected with the powers of this earth because Satan do not want to give his power up in this earth. It's going to be an all-out war. And guess who's going to lose? Yes, you got it. The powers that have established their armies, that have established their armies here, they're going to lose. Christ will win. And he will set up Jacob again. Let's go back to Genesis. That's a whole other teaching in itself, but we had to go into it because in Genesis, it identifies what would happen with Judah. Now we're going to go to Benjamin. Benjamin. Let's go to Genesis 49 and 27. Who have we identified so far? Reuben. Okay? The Seminole, uh, the Seminole Indians of Florida. And the Aborigines of Australia. We have identified Simeon and Levi. The Dominicans and the Haitians. We also have identified Judah, the so-called Negro. Now we're going in to Benjamin, Benjamin. Read. Benjamin, 
show raven as a wolf. Raven of a wolf. You ever, you ever see a wolf howl at night? That breaks down Benjamin or the Jamaicans or West Indians and how they sing. How they raven as wolves. They communicate through their songs. And, and, and you notice that the Benjamites talks about the Lion of Judah. They sing and they rave about Israel and how they would come back again as a people. Read. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf in the morning. He shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. He shall divide the spoil. Now, if you go into history, the Maroons, which were taken, which were taken down by the Europeans, the Maroons, which was an African tribe, which was Benjamin, end up taking down the ship, taking the gold and spoiling the ship, and turning the ship back. Yes, the Benjamites are known for their short temper. And they don't like to be forced into anything. So it was hard for the Europeans to take them down. Eventually they took them down, but I'll let you know, Benjamins, they're very tough. They're very strong-willed people. Go to Deuteronomy 33 and 12. Deuteronomy 33 and 12. Read. And of Benjamin he said, The beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him, and the Lord shall cover him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. To let you know that Benjamin is protected by the Most High. They're one of the tribes that still held on to a lot of their heritage. So out of all the tribes, you notice Benjamin is all uh, normally they speak about Israel. Now they go off going into the Heli Selassie. That's where they go off at. Saying that Queen Sheba had a child with Solomon and that through Heli Selassie we are Jews. Or going into the Ethiopian or Falashian understanding. That's incorrect. When you go into 2 Kings 17, it lets you know that Hamites were put in the land instead of the children of Israel. That's how the Hamites got there. So the spirit in Benjamin is correct, trying to hold to your heritage of Israel, but you're going about it the wrong way. You're going through Halei Selassie. Then you're using drugs like marijuana and all that to become spiritual. You don't need that. It's already in you. You don't need marijuana and getting high to, to bring out your spirituality. Your father Jacob in the Bible told you what will befall you, the tribes of the Maru. Raven and as a wolf, your spiritual people. So now you have to come back into the fullness of being who you are, opposed to still looking at Africa as your homeland. You didn't start in Africa. You started in Israel. You ran into Africa in 70 AD. See, once the kingdom was split, Judah was left. You had Judah, Benjamin, and Levi still there in the southern kingdom until the Romans on the Vespasian and Titus took you down and you ran into Africa in 70 AD. That's how you got taken into the West Indians. That's how the Haitians got taken into Haiti or Levi got taken into Haiti. And that's how you Negroes came over here to the Americas. How do you prove that? Oh, they can go to Deuteronomy 27 and 1. Deuteronomy 27 and 1. And Moses with the elders of Israel commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. So God gave the commandments to Moses when the Israelites came out of Egypt. He didn't give you religion. He gave Israel laws, statutes, and commandments contained in this book. Let's go to the next precept, Deuteronomy 28 and 1. And it shall come to pass... If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So the Lord told his people Israel, if you follow these laws I'm giving you, these laws will separate you from the heathens. If you do this, I will set you up over all the nations of the earth. You are my people. So I'm going to give you rules. And through these rules, 
you will be a light to the world. You will teach the whole earth how to follow me. But something happened. Read the 15th verse. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. But if you don't listen, you will, you will be cursed. You got your choice, Israel. You can get the blessings or you can get the curses. And you can guess what side Israel ended up choosing. The curses. Read the 15th verse again. But it shall come to pass, that thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. All these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now when you read the whole chapter, these curses really encompasses the whole 12 tribes. But we're going to pull out what happened to the to the uh, the darker tribes like Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. How did they get here to the Americas? How did uh, uh, Benjamin get to the West Indians of Trinidad and in Jamaica and the West Indians, Indies? How did the tribe of Levi get into Haiti? How did the Negroes get to the Americas? Yes. And there was a high percentage of Judah that also was taken into Brazil. Just a small percentage went into Brazil, but Judah is down there too. Some of them. Let's read the prophecy of them coming over here in cargo slave ships. Read the 68th verse. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With what? With ships. With ships. With ships. The only people that went into slavery in car with cargo slave ships is the Negroes here in America. The Negroes that were taken, the black people that were taken to Haiti, and those that were taken to the West Indies. I will bring you into Egypt a second time with ships. Now, mind you, that word Egypt only means bondage. That original land map mass was Montezorium or Mizraim. Okay, Mizraim. So it was called Egypt by the, by the Greeks. They seen the Great Pyramids and say, listen. This place must have, been, must have been built with hard bondage. So they called it Egypt, which means bondage. So the Lord shall bring thee into bondage a second time with what? With ships. Further proof that that word means bondage. Hold it and get Exodus 13 and 3. Hold what you have, and we're going to get Exodus 13 and 3 to show you that that bondage, that that Egypt means bondage. Make sure you hold your place, okay? Exodus 13 and 3 to prove that point. Read that. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt out of the house of bondage. Out of the what? Out of the house of bondage. Egypt means the house of bondage. Now go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Read that. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. He shall bring you into the house of bondage again with ships. There's no place in biblical history showing Israel going back to physical Egypt. That's talking about a condition. A condition. You shall go into Egypt a second time with what? With ships. With ships. This place we're in is spiritual Egypt. So, the, so these people that took over this land used the same children of Israel that built ancient Egypt to build modern or spiritual Egypt. All right? Hold that. Further proof before we go there, go to Revelations 11 and 8. Revelations 11 and 8. Read that. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city. So they're going to be in a dead state, which we are in. Which, it, which is spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. It's spiritually. This place is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Sodom, because the same sodomy is going on that went down in ancient Sodom and Gomorrah. So is this physically Sodom and Gomorrah? No. But the same 
homosexual lifestyle is being practiced that was practiced in ancient Sodom and Gomorrah. So it's spiritually Sodom. Why do the Bible call this place spiritual Egypt? Because the same people that served in ancient Egypt is serving here. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 68 again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With what? With ships. With ships. Go ahead. By the way, by the way whereof I spoke unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And to let you know that this is the last captivity for the children of Israel. After this captivity, Israel will not see slavery ever again. Israel was in slavery in Babylon, in ancient Egypt, Babylon, the Assyrians, the Persians, the Greeks, the Romans. All the nations enslaved Israel up until America today. You even have the Asians have took over some of Israel. And we're going to go into that in the South Pacific. All the nations have taken advantage of the children of Israel. You have Hamitic people, uh, uh, Edomite people, Persian people, Asian or Javetic people. All these people have taken advantage of Israel at some point. But this is our last captivity. Read. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. There you shall be sold unto your what? Your enemies. So the same people that Israel used to war with in the Old Testament, which were the enemies of Israel, have now become their slave masters. The Lord says, there you shall be sold unto your enemies. On what? Auction blocks. Sold to Mr. Kennedy down in Rhode Island. Sold to Mr. Washington here in Pennsylvania. Sold to Mr. Smith down in South Carolina. Sold to Mr. Thompson down in Mississippi. You shall be sold unto your enemies. That's Bible prophecy. So you cannot learn this in your regular institutions. They're hiding this from you. Read. For bondmen and bondwomen. That's a slave man and a slave woman. Go ahead. And no man shall buy you. And no man shall buy you. What do that mean? Buy means to redeem or save you. Man did not put you in this, this position, and man cannot buy you or redeem you out of this condition. Only God can. And who, who have purchased you with their blood? Our Lord and Savior, Savior Yeshua, or Jesus Christ. Now, we have showed you beyond any shadow of a doubt who the tribe of Reuben is, Okay, the Seminole Indians and Aborigines of Australia. We sh we've showed you, we've showed you beyond any shadow of a doubt who Simeon is, the Dominicans, who Levi is, the Haitians, who Judah is, the so-called Negroes. Okay, and who Benjamin is. Yes, the Jamaicans and West Indians and, Trin and the people from Trinidad. Okay, now we have broke down five of the tribes, and we made a statement that. Um, the Negro tribes, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, ran into Africa in 70 AD, running from Roman persecution. So we're going to get, get the scriptural proof of that, how Israel or Judah actually ran into Africa. And then we're going to go back to Genesis and break down the rest of the tribes. Let's go to Luke 21 and 20. Read that. And when you shall see Jerusalem can pass with armies. So Christ said, when you shall see Jerusalem can pass with armies. So that was a high occupation of Roman centurions within the land of Israel. Read. Then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. That's the desolation spoken of in Daniel. Go ahead. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Flee into the mountains. So you want to know how Israel or the lost sheep got into Africa, they ran into Africa running from Roman persecution in 70 AD. What mountains is this explaining? The mountains between Africa and Europe, which is the Atlas Mountains, went over into Morocco and migrated into the Ivory Coast, like Liberia, uh, Ghana, Sierra Leone, uh, Nigeria, all those, all those Timbuktu, all those different areas uh, from the western Ivory Coast were given to Israel or the seed of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi unto the Lord 
uh, allowed the Europeans to take them into their new lands. Now you have the Hamitic people, which are natural Africans, and the Arabs, the seed of Ishmael, along with Esau. They, con they conspire together to sell God's people into the lands they are in today, that they reside in today in captivity <clears throat> until the Lord will, sa will save them. So they ran into Africa. They wasn't born in Africa. They, wouldn't, they, they was not supposed to stay in Africa. They were there for a period of time. Now, go to Revelations 12 and 12. Africa is not the motherland. That's another false teaching, okay? All life came off of the boat. Noah had three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, okay? And all the life came off the boat. The boat settled in Mount Ararat, Turkey. Ham migrated into his land, which is Africa today. Shem went into his land, okay? And Japheth went into their lands, which is uh, the European areas and it was pushed back further east into Asia. Read Revelations 12 and 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. The Lord says woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. Read. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he had but a short time. So when Christ was crucified, the, the, the clock started ticking on how long Satan would have to reign in this earth. So through that short time, he started persecuting Christ's people, starting in 70 A.D. Read. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Who was the woman that brought forth Christ? Israel. That's the woman. Read. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness. She flew, she flew into the wilderness. That was Israel running into Africa, fleeing from Roman persecution. Go ahead. Into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half of time. And that time, time and a half of times is a dispensation of time between the time Israel would fall until Christ would come back and save Israel. That's the dispensation. That's the dispensation. Now, let's go back into identifying the lost tribes of Israel. We've identified Reuben, which is uh, the Seminole Indians and the Aborigines of Australia. We've identified Simeon, which are the, the Dominicans, Levi, which are the Haitians. We've identified Judah, which is the so-called Negroes here. We have identified Benjamin, which is the so-called Jamaicans, West Indian, and the people in Trinidad. Now we're going into Zebulon, the father Jacob, Israel, letting his children know what will befall them in the last days. Uh, let's go to Genesis 49 and 13. Zebulon shall dwell at the haven of the sea, and he shall be for an haven of ships. He shall be for an haven of ships. Who's that? Panama and Guatemala. Panama, Panam the Panama Canal, which is a haven of ships. So the Lord told uh, Zebulun in the last days, your, your habitation will be a haven for ships. That one land of Panama connects both oceans. It communicates, with, it, it communicates and actually uh, trade on both sides of the world. That's the haven of ships, Panama. So if you were from, if you're a Panamanian and Guatemalan, you are from the tribe of Zebulon because ships will be haven on your land in the latter days. Now, let's get the next one, Genesis 49 and 14. Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens. Strong as couching down between two burdens. When you see that, uh, those, uh, those bumper stickers south of the border, you see the two, the, the two donkeys and the man couching down with a big hat on. That lets you know that their burdens would be the fact that they work. They work hard. They're known for working. They, and, and that work is the burden that the Lord put on them. Read. And he saw that, and he saw 
That rest was good. That rest is the fiesta that the Mexicans have every noon, which is called rest. Go ahead. And the land that it was pleasant. And the land that it was pleasant, a very fertile land the Mexicans hold today. And all the other, all the other people in the earth, the heathens, use that land for their own gain. There's no way Mexicans should have to cross the border to feed their family with how rich and fertile their land is. The other nations have taken advantage of Issachar and made them poor. Fulfilling this prophecy to let you know that they'll be like an ass couched between two, two asses or burdens or donkeys. They'll, they'll have to work with the sweat of their brow to make anything, even though they have a fruitful land. Go to Deuteronomy 33 and 18 and 19. So who is Issachar the Mexicans today? Read that. And of Zebulon he said, Rejoice, Zebulon, in thy going out, and Issachar in thy tents. In thy tents. That's how they used to travel. In tents. All the Indian tribes over here used to travel in teepees or tents. Or what the scriptures call in the Old Testament, booths. Booth, traveling in tents. Another defined prophecy to show you who the children of Israel are here today. Now, let's go to Genesis 49 and 16. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Now, we know that Dan was the smallest of all the tribes of Israel. Dan was small. They had a little place next to Mount Seir. We found out through research, and we're going to make a whole tape on this to prove what we're showing here, that Dan ended up becoming the Herods and set up a Sanhedrin to judge God's people. So Dan made an agreement with Esau and Satan for the priesthood, and they became the Herods, and that's why they're not named in Revelation, the 12th chapter. Dan started dealing with evil, witchcraft. And they link their seed with Esau. Get Judges 18 and 1. More proof on Dan. It says, Dan so judge is one of the tribes of Israel. And we know Dan was not given an inheritance as a priest. They were the smallest tribe. Okay? But they started making an agreement because they were smaller with Esau, and they made an agreement with Satan dealing with all these different gods and became judges to try to destroy Christ and Christ's people. We want to prove that. Read Judges 18 and 1. In those days there was no king in Israel, and in those days the tribe of, of the Danites sought them an inheritance to dwell in. So when the northern kingdom was, uh, was destroyed, Dan seen an opportunity to come to the forefront. Read. For unto that day all that inheritance had not fallen unto them among the tribes of Israel. So Dan was not supposed to have a priestly inheritance. Go ahead. And the children of Dan sent of their family five men from their coast, men of valor from Zarah and from Ishtar, to spy out the land and to search it. And they said unto them, Go search the land, who when they came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micah, they lodged there. So they spied out the land to set up their own powers. Go down to the 27th verse, talking about the tribe of Dan. What happened to Dan? Read. And they took the things which Micah had made, and the priests which he had, and came unto Lash, unto a people that were a quiet and secure. And they smoked them with the edge of the sword, and burnt the city with fire. Go ahead. And there was no deliverer, because it was from Zidon, and they had no business with any man. And it was in the valley that lieth by Bethreha, and they built a city and dwelt therein. And they called the name of the city Dan, after the name of Dan their father, who was born unto Israel, howbeit the name of the city was Laash at the first. And the children of Dan set up the graven image. They set up what? The graven image. They started setting up graven images to Satan. Read. 
And Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, he had his sons, he and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan. You see that? They became priests. They started setting up their own priesthood. Read. Until the day of the captivity of the land. And they set them up, Micah's graven image, which he had made, all the time the house of God was in Shiloh. You see that? So Dan made themselves priests. So when Christ came on the scene, the Sanhedrin was already set. And the Harads were already set. Who were the Harads? Dan. Dan. Dan linked with Esau and became a priestly people over the tribes of Israel. That's why it says in Genesis 49, go back to Genesis 49 again. Genesis 49, 16 and 17. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. As one of the tribes of Israel. So he set himself up as a judge. So the Lord cut him off as a people. He set himself up as a priest dealing with Satan. Read. Dan shall be a serpent by the way and Adler in the path. He was a serpent by the way. Because Satan got up in him as a Harad to try to kill Christ. When Christ's star was seen in the east. Go ahead. That biteth the horse hills so that his rider shall fall backward. And they did that. Dan was set up to try to make Israel go back. So Dan made an agreement with Esau and Satan to go against his own people. To judge God's people with money. And we're going to go into that teaching, a whole teaching on Dan itself. And that's why Dan is not numbered with the 12 tribes in Revelation, the 7th chapter. Because they mixed their seed with Esau, and they started going after the gods of the other nations and set themselves up as priests. Now, let's go to Genesis 49 and 19, going into the tribe of Gad. Go ahead. Genesis 49 and 19. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. A troop shall overcome Gad, but he shall overcome at the last. What troop overtook Gad? The U.S. Cavalry under Custer. When Esau came over here, the troop that overtook Gad, the North American Indians, you can see the slaughters here. The troop that overtook Gad was a U.S. cavalry. Gad is a North American Indian. Here's a picture showing them moving and migrating because of the conquest of the Western world. They had to move because the settlers came over here from York and was putting smallpox in, their, in the blankets, killing the buffalo, spreading diseases amongst the people, and killing the people with biological warfare. Over here, you show the same troop with mass graves, pushing the North American Indians in mass graves and burying them, and taking a picture to commemorate this destruction. You see, we know a lot of you don't want to see this, but this is how uh, America have come to be the great country it is today. It was built on what you see. Bloodshed. And then, to show you the, the pride of those that took the Indians down, they had photographers take pictures of the mass graves pushing the, the Gadites, or the North American Indians, in the graves. Okay? Now, we're not bringing this out to say that you need to seek any type of vengeance because vengeance belongs to the Most High. But in order for us to show you the truth, we have to bring out the facts. Uh, it doesn't matter how raw they are, we have to bring out the facts. Because if they were bold enough to put it in a book, we're bold enough to show it. Okay? Read that again in Genesis 49. And 19. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Gad, you don't have to worry about it because you will overcome at the last. You will overcome. Been pushed into re reservations. Been destroyed. 
Only thing you got to show for all this great land is a few casinos. The Lord says you will overcome. See, your father, Jacob, told you that even though you went through these things, Gad or the North American Indian, you will overcome. Okay? So according to the Bible, you didn't come over here through the barren straits. Your spiritual people dealing with the great spirit because you come from the seeds of Israel. More. Let's get Deuteronomy 33 and 20 and 21. On Gad. Read that. And, and of Gad he said, Blessed be he that enlargeth Gad. He dwelleth as a lion and teareth the arm with the crown of the head. Read that again. And of Gad he said, Blessed be, blessed be he that enlargeth Gad. Go he, ahead. He dwelleth as a lion and teareth the arm with the crown of the head. He dwelleth as a lion. i let you know that he would dwell in the wilderness and teareth the crown with, with the, uh, read that part again, with the what? And teareth the arm, the with, arm the crown me, of the head. with the crown of the head. To let you know that they would use the feathers to tear their hand to make blood packs or peace packs. So they would take the feather out of their crown and tear their hand in shape and make peace packs. Representing how the North American Indians made agreements. Showing you in the, their, showing you the Gadites had all this land, the buffalo. This land was beautiful. And these winners were bitter winners. Uh, when the Europeans came over, they taught the, uh, the Europeans how to live on the land. Showed them how to dry out food and make things like beef jerky to live through the winter. Showed them how to hunt in the land. Okay? Go to, go to Psalms 55 and 20 real quick. Psalms 55 and 20. Breaking down Gad. Read that. He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. To let you know that the people that came over here, the European powers, put forth his hand with those that was at peace with them. The Indians just wanted peace. They were like, listen, this land is big enough for all of us. They just wanted peace. But through peace, they received the sword. They received diseases. They received their, their people being destroyed and a new God being taught to them. Read. He had broken his covenant. They broke their agreement. It was over 300 some odd uh, peace treaties made, and each covenant or agreement was broken here in this country talking about the agreements they made with the North American Indian tribe of Gad. Go ahead. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Their words were smoother than butter. Smooth. You speak with forked tongue. That's what Gad used to tell them. Because it seems like everything was alright. But they would get one land, they would talk and say, listen, we can all live together. And they would push them further and further and further and further until they pushed them into reservations with that smooth tongue. But what was in their heart? Read. But war was in his heart. But what? But war was in his heart. Even though you signed your treaties and you spoke with great words and your words were smoother than butter, it was war in your heart or your mind. The whole time they was making these agreements, they was, they was behind closed doors making maps on how they was going to control and distribute the land for the other Europeans that were coming over. Yes, this is true. Identifying who are the lost sheep of Israel. Now a lot of our people don't know this because not only did they come over here with diseases, they came over here with a religion. So you just can't destroy the people biologically. You have to destroy them spiritually. You must give them a new God that was part of these people we explained becoming the lost sheep of Israel. We're going to bring out more. 
and give you the conclusion of who are the lost sheep of Israel. Okay, now we have the North American Indians. You was lost, but now you're found. You're from the tribe of Gad. Your father told you in Genesis the 49th chapter that you are from the tribe of Gad. A troop shall overtake you. Now, let, let's move this further, going into the tribe of Asher. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of brothers who break this down say that Asher is Colombians. That's a wrong understanding. Colombia is right next to Panama. They're the same people. Panamanians, Guatemalans, and Colombians, they are the same. Uh, the tribe of Asher, there's something key about the tribe of Asher. You know what that is? The oil. From Venezuela through Argentina, through Brazil, all the way down through Argentina, you have oil. That's the key part there. So those that are saying that that's Colombia, they're incorrect and we're going to show it. Uh, when you, I don't know how many of you look at what's politically going on in the earth, but the president of Venezuela threatened George Bush and said that if they go into Iran, they would raise the oil prices over $100 a barrel. So, when it comes to the oil resources in South America, the Venezuelans all the way down through Brazil controls the oil resources on this side of the earth. Let's get some Bible prophecy to prove that, or Bible understanding. Genesis 49 and 20. Read that. Out of Asher, his bread shall be fat. His and bread he, shall be fat to let you know his land shall be fertile. Go ahead. And he shall yield royal dainties. Royal dainties. What royal dainties? Let's see. Go to Deuteronomy 33 and 20. Royal dainties. Read Deuteronomy 33, excuse me, and 24. Read that. And of Asher he said, Let Asher be blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brethren, and let, and let him dip his foot in oil. Let Asher dip his foot in oil. The Colombians are not controlling oil. The Venezuelans, all the way down through uh, Brazil and Argentina, have the oil. Okay? So the oil show you in the last days who would be the tribe of Asher. So the father Jacob told him that your sons will dip their foot in oil. Now, when you do the research in South America, you'll know when they was running from the, from the Europeans d during the little war there, they tripped their foot and they, they, their crews was coming up with oil in South America. Okay, and that's how this land becomes so dainty and rich, the oil resources. More proof. Get Job 29 and 6, the precept that links directly to this. Who's Asher? The Venezuelans all the way down through Brazil and Argentina. The aborigines of that land that came over here. Uh, let's read Job 29 and 6. When I washed my steps with butter, and the rock poured me out rivers of oil. The rock poured out what? Rivers of oil. Rivers of oil. Get your maps, if you're on YouTube or, or if you're on Google, excuse me, Google all your resources in South America and you would see what land mass of the people that's sitting on oil. It's clear, it's not Colombians. It's easy to understand. So whoever's teaching that they are Colombian, just correct that, all right? Read on. When I went out to the gate through the city, when I prepared my seat in the street, the young men saw me and hid themselves, and the age arose and stood up. Now, we're going back to Genesis 49. Genesis 49. Now we know who Asher is. The Venezuelans. The Aborigines of Brazil. And the Aborigines of Argentina. All these places are oil-rich resource places in South America. So link that with the Bible, you have the tribe of Asher. Now, we're going into the tribe of Naphtali. Naphtali. Okay? Let's go to Genesis 49 and 21. And there's a mystery connected with this tribe too. And we're going to pull that out. Alright? Some people have been teaching that Naphtali is Argentinian Chileans. Absolutely incorrect. We're going to teach the truth on that. Go to Genesis 49 and 21. Read that. 
Naphtali is a hind let loose. He giveth goodly words. He giveth goodly words. Naphtali is the modern day Hawaiians and Samoans. Yes. They're from the tribe of Naphtali. The goodly words they give is when you go on their land, and I know because we went there, I've been to Hawaii, the goodly words they give you is aloha. They greet everyone that come down with lays around their necks, similar to what you see on this picture right here. See that picture right here? The lays around their head and around their neck. They give goodly words. Now, they were taken down or being controlled by the Asians today. But they are also from the tribes of Israel, the aborigines of Hawaii and Samoan. We're going to show you the mystery when it comes to that. Read that again. Naphtali is a hind let loose. He giveth goodly words. Go ahead. It says a hind let loose to let you know that they are wilderness people when it comes to how they interact with the land and how they dance and how free they are as a people like a hind let loose very nice and friendly and great people let's go to Deuteronomy 33 and 23 because this is the mystery to show you who they are today and I put something on the board to give you further understanding but we're going to go to Deuteronomy 33 right and we're going to read the 23rd verse about Naphtali. Read. And of Naphtali, he said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor. Satisfied with flavor. I mean, with, with favor. They got flavor, but I'm talking about with favor. To let you know that they're very good looking people. Go ahead. And full with the blessings of the Lord. Possessest thou the west and the south. It says, Possessest thou the west and the south. Now, those that used to break this down thought that the West and the South meant Argentina and Ch Chile from the West and South America. Incorrect. All right. When you go into the Hebrew. All right. And we're going to bring the Hebrew up. All right. We're going to bring that. Where my Hebrew book at? Right here. We're going to bring the Hebrew up along with the Strong's Concordance. Do a little school here and let you know. I'm, let's go to my board here. Naphtali. When you see the south and the west, the word west is not really there in the Hebrew. The word seas is there in the Hebrew. So unless you go into the Hebrew, you would think it's in a different region. It's seas, which is yum. Oh, bodies of water. The South and the Seas. The South Pacific Seas is what? South Pacific. Who's in the South Pacific? Hawaiians, Samoans, and the Aborigines. How do you know that? Here it is right here in the Hebrew. I'm going to read it here. Oh, Naphtali, and this is coming out of the Hebrew English Tanakh. All right. O Naphtali, say it with favor and full of the Lord's blessing. Take possession of the west and the south. When you look at it right here, it's yum, wada, wada rawum, which is yum, which is waters. And this word right here is south. Waters of the South. Water Rawum. Bodies of water and the South. In the 23rd verse. And when you go into the Strong's Concordance, it's number, that word West is number 32. I mean, 82 20. 82 20 of the Hebrew. In that same place, when you go to Deuteronomy 33 and 24, and it says, Yum, a large body of water. Right here, and I have it marked so that they can go over my finger is there on Yum. So the word West was put there 
West should not be there for Naphtali. It's seas or bodies of water. Who's in the southern seas? Our brothers, Naphtali. The Hawaiians and Samoans. Yes, they are our people. They're from the tribe of Naphtali. Again, it shouldn't be south, possess the south and the west. It should be the south and the seas. What's that? On your map, South Pacific. Naphtali in the South Pacific. What people or Aborigines are in the South Pacific, the South Pacific before Japan and the Asians came over to control them, the way the Europeans are controlling the Indians here today and, and the, uh, the other tribes here today. Hawaiians were there already. They came over here in 718 B.C. Samoans, and they're the Aborigines of these lands, Hawaii and Samoans. And there's a few other islands down there. You have Honolulu. A lot of those little islands down there. They're from the tribes of Israel. They're from the seed of Naphtali, their father. They give goodly words. Oh, aloha. <laughs> and we're here to say aloha to you, brothers, and you sisters over in Hawaii. You were lost, but now you're found. Let's go next to the tribe of Ephraim. Let's go to Genesis 49 and 22. Ephraim today is whom we would call the so-called Baliko Taino Indians or the Puerto, Puerto Ricans. All right? Your father Joseph, your father Joseph saved the land. He was a dreamer of dreamers. He saved the land by going into Egypt and saving the earth from seven years of famine. He told the Egyptians exactly how to store the grain so that the whole earth can pay homage and get food and get saved through Egypt. If Joseph would not have went into the land, the whole earth, all the people would have died of famine. So the Lord used Israel or Joseph or Ephraim to save the earth. All right? Ephraim, Ephraim or Joseph made Egypt great. All right? And then after Egypt became great under Joseph, Joseph called his brothers in and they partook with the blessings of Joseph. And when Israel left Egypt, they took your father's bones. Joseph, yes. Joseph is the father of Ephraim, which is the Puerto Ricans, and Manasseh, which is the modern day Cubans. All right? Let's go to Genesis 49 and 21. Read that. Genesis 49 and 22. Yeah, 22, excuse me. Go ahead. Joseph is a fruitful bow. Joseph is a fruitful bow. To let you know they like to have a lot of children. They're fruitful. Go ahead. Even a fruitful bow by a well. Go ahead. Whose branches run over the wall. Whose branches run over the wall. To let you know they have a lot of children. And they stay in one, uh, one home. They don't like to spread their family out all over the place. They like branches that run over the walls. You have two generations, two, three generations living under one roof. Okay? Read on. The archers have, have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. Who's the archers? The conquistadors who came over to your land and called it Puerto Rico or called, it, or called the land a port of riches. Why? Because the Baliqua Taino Indians, before that land was called Puerto Rico, was playing with diamonds like marbles. You had so much riches that they started calling you after the riches of your land. Before that, you was not called Puerto, Port of Riches. The Spaniards named you Puerto Rican. You were from the tribe of Joseph. Go ahead. Read on. Excuse me. That's fine. But his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hand were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. But the Most High made Ephraim strong. That's why they are proud 
as a, as a so-called nation today, but they are a tribe. They are very proud and strong people. They're from the tribe of Ephraim. Go to Deuteronomy 33 and 13. Deuteronomy 33 and 13. And now a lot of these prophecies also link to Manasseh, which are the Cubans. Because Manasseh and Ephraim were brothers. They were Joseph's sons who were adopted into the 12 tribes by Jacob. All right? Let's read Deuteronomy 33 and 13 down to 17. And of Joseph he said, Blessed of the Lord be his land, for the precious things of heaven, for the dew and for the deep that coucheth beneath, and for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun, and for the precious things put forth by the moon, and for the chief things of the ancient mountains, and for the precious things of the lasting hills, and for the precious things of the earth and fullness thereof. So the earth gave forth all her fruits to Ephraim. And we know Puerto Rico as a very fruitful land. The waters, everything just fruitful. So when the Spanish or Europeans came over, they called it the port of riches. They started destroying the man child. They started destroying the people so they can take over the riches that were in the land. Read. And for the goodwill of him that dwelleth in the bush, let the blessing come upon the head of Joseph and upon the top of the head of him that was separated from his brethren. And it says, those that dwelleth in the bush. That's why they called them, excuse, excuse the quote, when they came over here, called them, excuse me, bush niggers and stuff like that. By names. Because they were known for living amongst the bushes. And it says right here, and upon the top of the head of them that was separated from his brethren. Joseph was separated from his brethren. To do what? To save his people by going into Egypt and saving the earth through seven years of famine. So Ephraim became the top tribe of the northern kingdom while you were still in Israel. You were leaders. You were leaders until wars broke out and Ephraim started fighting against Judah. And that same envy was on us for a long period of time and now you can see it's coming off of us now. We're starting to connect again. So that spirit of envy, that fighting that we had against each other, is now is coming off of us. The spirit got us coming together again. And all praises be to the most high for that. Okay? I need you to go to Hosea 7 and 8 down through 16. Hosea 7 and 8. Now a lot of these prophecies connect to Manasseh, which are the Cubans also. Everywhere Ephraim went, Manasseh went because they were brethren. Joseph had two children out of Egypt. Ephraimites, which are the so-called Puerto Ricans, and Manassites, which are the modern-day Cubans. Okay? Let's go to Hosea 7 and 8. Let's read that. Ephraim, he have mixed himself among the people. Ephraim have mixed himself among the people. So that's why you have a real dark Ephraimites, like almost Negroid or two Negroid, like a Trinidad. To a real light uh, uh, skin, like J Lo and Mark Anthony. Ephraim had have did what? Read that again. You got this? Okay, go ahead. Ephraim, Ephraim, Ephraim he have mixed himself among the people. He have mixed himself amongst the people. Who did he mix himself amongst? Esau. When Esau came over here. And you have some today, they will deal with other nations before they would deal with people of their own uh, ethnic groups. You understand? They would do that. They, they're racist against their own people. All right? And they, they're taught that. Another form of captivity or slavery is to have you hate your own and love others. When you really should love, you, there's nothing wrong with loving yourself. We're not saying go around hating other people, but what's wrong with loving yourself? Okay? Read on. Ephraim is a cake not turned. He's a cake not turned. If you see a cake not turned, it's dark on one side and it's light on the other. So Ephraim can, can range from a real light 
to even to Caucasian. Look Caucasian. And see, and that's why a lot of us, you just can't be judging out there on the streets based on appearance. Because you have Israel who may look like, like another nation, like Esau. And here it is, you'll be ripping up and destroying your own people because of you looking at you just looking at skin color. Alright? Because Ephraim is a cake not term. You're gonna have some Cubans who look who look European. You just can't make an assessment or a judgment on appearance, like Paul said. Read on. Strangers have devoured his strength. Strangers have devoured Ephraim's strength. Ephraim was strong, still is. But the strangers that came over here and devoured you are the Spaniards. That's why you're speaking Spanish today. That was not your tongue. The Spaniards took you over and took your strength away, took your God away, gave you Catholicism, gave you their way of thinking. And now the Lord is calling the lost seed of Ephraim back to him. Read. Strangers have devoured his strength, and he knoweth it not. And you don't even know it. You don't even perceive it. A lot of us run around with Puerto Rican flags, and it's good to deal with your, 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 you know, your home pride. It's good that you, you have some sense of pride, but you don't even understand you've been devoured. Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico. You just saying it's Puerto Rico because you've been taken over by the Spanish, and they named your land Port of Riches. They took everything from you, and now you got pride and not knowing who you are. You, know, you haven't even perceived it, that you are actually from the chosen seed of Israel. The Lord is calling you back. Read. Yea, gray hairs are here and there upon him, yet he knoweth not. And the pride of Israel testifieth to his face. And they do not return to the Lord their God, nor seek him for all this. And yet they still are not seeking the Most High. All these things are coming down on our people, on all of us. And we still are not returning. So the Lord is calling us back. Let's go to Hosea 1 and 10. Before we go there, let's go to Genesis 48. And we're going to start at the first verse. Yes. And it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Manasseh and Ephraim. So Joseph, Joseph had two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, and Jacob adopted those two sons as his. They was actually his grandsons, but Jacob called them his sons because he loved Joseph, and Joseph saved Israel. Let's go straight down. Finish reading. And one told Jacob, and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh, cometh unto thee, and Israel strengthened himself, and sat upon the bed. And Jacob said unto Joseph, The Most High Almighty appeared unto me as at, at last in the land of Canaan, and blessed me, and said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful, and multiply thee, and I will make of thee a multitude of people, and will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. Go ahead. And now the two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt before I came unto thee in Egypt, are mine. Are who? Are mine. Now they belong to Jacob. Jacob adopted Manasseh and Ephraim. So Joseph, there's two tribes that came out of Joseph that are now part of the 12 tribes. And through that, and through this adoption, Dan dealing with his wickedness, trying to destroy Israel and judge Israel, he was cast out as a tribe, so he's no longer counted. And Levi fell as the priest, and he became a nation, which makes up the twelve tribes. Read. And now thy two sons Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt before I came unto thee in Egypt, are mine, as Reuben and Simeon. They shall be mine. They shall be mine. So now, Manasseh and Ephraim have become sons of Jacob. They were adopted. They were grandsons, but they became sons. Now, when you go into Ephraim, you know that Manasseh is connected. Read on. And thy issue which thou begettest after them shall be thine, 
and shall be called after thy, th the name of their brethren in their inheritance. They shall be called after the name of their brethren in their inheritance. Go down to the 12th verse. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand towards Israel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly. He got his hand wittingly. Instead of giving his right hand to Manasseh, which was the heir, he switched it and say, listen, I'm going to make Ephraim over Manasseh. Ephraim is going to be a higher tribe than Manasseh. Read. For Manasseh was the firstborn, and he blessed Joseph and said, The Most High, before whom my father Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life along unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the last, and let my name be named on them. Let my name be named on them. So now they are tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Go ahead. And, and let them grow as a multitude in the midst of the earth. That's some key things we're going to bring out in the Gentile breakdown later. But go ahead. And when Joseph saw that his father's, his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. So Joseph wanted the blessing to go to Manasseh of the firstborn. Read. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son. He said, I know, I know my son. I know what I'm doing. Read. He also should become a people, and he also should be great. But truly his younger brother should be greater than he, and his seed should become a multitude of nations. So he was letting them know that, I know that you want Manasseh to be blessed, but Ephraim is going to be greater than Manasseh. Who is Ephraim? The so-called Puerto Ricans today. Who is Manasseh? The modern-day Cubans. Thereby giving you the twelve tribes of Israel. Get Hosea 1 and 10. And Revelations the seventh chapter. Hosea one and ten. Read that. Yet the number of the children of Israel should be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it should be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. In the place it was said, Ye are not my people. What place was it said that? It was said that here in America, in all from the earth. The Lord never named anyone Negroes, Mexicans, Panamanians, Guatemalans. He never named people North American Indians. The Lord never named people Jamaicans or Negroes or African Americans. The Lord never named people uh, uh, West Indians, Trinidadians, Haitians. <laughs> he says, in the place where it says you are not my people, because the Lord never called anyone Samoans or Hawaiians or Australians or Indians or Dominicans. So in your captivity, in the place where it was said, you are not God's people, where did that happen here? Right here in the Americas and all over the world. What will be said to them? There it shall be said unto them. In that here. same land it shall be said to you. When the Spirit of God bring, brings forth the truth at the very end, in the latter days. It shall be said to these same people. What? Ye are the sons of the living God. You are actually the physical sons of the living God. You are from the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Revelation the seventh chapter. What is the importance of this? Now soon we're going to go into the Gentile breakdown. It's going to be coming very soon. So we're not going to leave anyone out. We're going to show the whole world, but it's important to identify those 12 tribes, those lost sheep, because Christ says he came for those lost sheep. What is the importance? Read Revelation 7 and 1. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, 
holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So the Lord told him, Don't hurt anything, told the angels. Don't destroy anything in this earth until I've sealed my servants. So it's important to identify these servants. Why? Three. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So, so before Christ judged this earth, a hundred and forty-four thousand men of each tribe must be sealed. So it's important these people know who they are. So they can step to the plate and assume their right positions as leaders on this earth. How do you know they're men? How do we know they're men? Hold it and get Ezekiel 9 and 4 talking about the mark. How do we know the 144,000 in Revelation that must be sealed are men? Ezekiel 9 and 4. Read that. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So the men that are sighing and crying for all the abominations that are be, being done in this earth, those are the people that the Lord, or the men the Lord is suing. The men that are tired of the, the wickedness that's going on in the earth. The men that are willing to stand against all odds to uphold this book until the very end. The Lord says to those, he sent an angel to put a mark on them, to mark each of them, and they're all men. Go back to Revelations. Read the fourth verse. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of all the children of Israel. So that's the New Testament. So if the Lord says he's sending angels to mark those tribes, how can we say today it doesn't matter who the people are? <laughs> That's the New Testament. So in order for these people to stand up and assume their position, they must first get back the identity they lost in captivity. That's our job. That's what we're doing. We're bringing forth that spirit of Christ to identify those that's going to lead this kingdom to come. Read. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. So-called Negroes. 12,000 men have to wake up and stand under Christ. Read. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Reuben, Seminole Indians, and some in the Aborigines of Australia. 12,000 of you must stand up under Christ. Go ahead. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. North American Indians. 12,000 of you men must stand up under Christ. Read. Of the tribe of Asher was sealed 12,000. The tribe of Asher, the Venezuelans all the way down through the aborigines of Brazil and Argentinians. 12,000 of you must stand up as men of the Most High in Christ. Read. Of the tribe of Nathali were sealed 12,000. Nathali, Hawaiians, and Samoans of the aborigines of, of the South Pacific. 12,000 men must stand up under the name of the Most High in Christ. Read. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. The Manasseh, which is the so-called Cubans, 12,000 of you must stand up in the spirit of Christ. Read. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Simeon, the so-called Dominicans, 12,000 of you must stand up in full power under Yeshua, the Savior. Read. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Levi, the so-called Haitians, 12,000 of you mighty men must stand up in the name of Christ. Read. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Issachar, the Mexicans, 12,000 of these Mexican men must stand up in the spirit of Christ to build this kingdom. Read. Of the tribe of Zebulon were sealed 12,000. Zebulon, the Panamanians, down through Guatemala, and Colombians, 12,000 of you brothers need to stand up and come together under Christ. Read. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Joseph, a so-called Puerto Rican or Ephraim, 
12,000 of you brothers need to stand up in the spirit of Christ. Three of the tribe of Benjamin were still 12,000. Benjamin ravening like a wolf. You Jamaicans, West Indians, Trinidadians from Trinidad. 12,000 need to stand up under Christ, not Rastafarian, under Christ and stand as a tribe of Benjamin under Christ. Read. After this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Go ahead. And cried with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And this is crying out throughout the whole earth. All the nations of the earth shall bow to Christ. All the nations of the world will acknowledge who are the true people of God. It's time. We're at the end. We have a limited time before we're at the tail end of Jacob's trouble. And we're using every means necessary to cry out and put that spirit out in the world. Saying, listen, Christ want Israel to come back. We're going to leave it with words of our Lord and Savior. Read Matthew 10, 5 and 6. Read. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And that's why we're going to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We understand Israel was scattered throughout the whole earth. And now it's the spirit of Christ that's gathering them. Matthew 28 and 20. Last scripture of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua. His name is not Joshua. His name is not Yahawashai. His name is Savior. In the Hebrew, Yeshua. We're going to end it with our Lord and Savior, Yeshua. Let's go to Matthew, the 28th chapter, in the 18th verse. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Jesus, or Yeshua, it says, came and spoke and said unto them, the disciples, All power is, is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So when Christ was crucified, he received all power. So it's more than saying you are of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Pharisees and scribes claim to that. We must now come together under the spirit of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, who through his blood has given us another opportunity. Read. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So it's time for us to take heed to this commandment. We need to baptize in the name of the Father, Ahiah, Ashar, Ahiah, the Son, Yeshua, and the Holy Spirit, Wal We need to go out through this whole earth, baptizing, because Israel is scattered throughout the whole earth. So even though we have pinpointed some regions, according to prophecy, Israel is everywhere. So through the internet and through the resources we have today to do these greater works, we're putting it out there. We need to baptize with water because Christ was baptized with water to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We need to put down our past. We need to put down all the things that are stopping us from being holy and let Christ's blood cover us. Read teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. Now, we can't teach people to observe what are the things that Moses commanded. Yes, we follow some of the things of Moses, but what Christ commanded is more important. We must link into Yeshua, our Savior. It's His Spirit that's gathering Israel. And, and, like, and like the serpent was raised in the wilderness, when we came out of Egypt, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. Now Christ is gathering Israel to him. Read. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. The Lord is with us even until this time. 
even until this whole thing we see is no more. Christ is about to raise his people again. And we are going into the tail end of Jacob's trouble. This is the worst time ever on the earth. The things we are about to go through. So you tribes that was mentioned, it's time for you to assume your position because the Lord is breaking the powers of the earth so that you can stand as rulers of this earth again under the powers of Christ and the disciples. In the name of our, our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, we thank you. We thank the Lord for this spirit, this information, until we see you again in Zion, all of you. Amen.